Hello viewers, today for the initial checkout we have a VTEC telephone. This is a 5.8 gigahertz telephone and this is one of the ones that the H or the letter H from internet land sent over. This is the model CS5113 there is a 900 megahertz equivalent uh, or actually that may not be true I know there was a 2.4 gigahertz equivalent if you will of this telephone and then there was a deck 6 equivalent of this telephone which was the um, I just had it out a second ago and now I don't well, anyways it's that common one that's everywhere and uh, this phone, it kind of dawned on me as I was setting this up for this video. This was probably one of the last, if not the last, analog telephones available on the market. This is analog 5.8 over 900 megahertz. And Uniden made analog 5.8 gigahertz phones. But they didn't seem to be made much past 2008. And while these probably weren't made much past 2008 either, they did seem to be pretty widely available for some time after that. I distinctly remember these, well not, not the white one, but the black version with the answering machine. I distinctly remember seeing that in stores into the 2010s right around the time just before I started to get into collecting telephones avidly I remember seeing the black version of this with the answering machine still on the shelves at one of the uh, local pharmacy stores that we would go to on occasion and I kind of wanted one at the time because it reminded me of the VTech 5881 that we had years prior. This phone, like many of the other VTEX economy models, I think was pretty decent. It's too bad that the 900 megahertz side wasn't designed quite right because the 5.8 gigahertz side really has an impressive range but unfortunately the 900 megahertz side loses reception quite quickly in comparison to the 5.8 which is odd because in theory the 900 should go much further it must be a um, poor antenna design or an issue of limited power that was one of the caveats of the 5.8 gigahertz phones and that was really the main reason for the dual band phones was that the 5.8 gigahertz band required more power to transmit on and of course if you're working with a battery operated device transmit power is, is very important because you only have so much of it and so that was the reason why these telephones became dual band because in theory receiving on the 5.8 gigahertz from the base and then transmitting back to the base at 2.4 or 900 megahertz supposedly was going to save a significant amount of battery power enough that it was worth designing it that way rather than having the handset transmit back on 5.8 gigahertz now of course the, the design was uh, was fatal it was a fatal flaw because the 2.4 and 5.8 models of course still interfered with the Wi-Fi networks at the time and had they been true 5.8 gigahertz phones like what Uniden produced and what some of Panasonic produced that wouldn't have happened because this was pre the 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi boom oddly enough the Digitan models never seemed to utilize 900 megahertz those almost exclusively 
seemed to be 2.4. It was only for the analog models that it seemed to be the opposite. It was almost always 5.8 and 900. And Uniden did the same thing. And I often wonder what the reason for that was. I wonder if it was because there would have been too much interference with the Wi-Fi. A lot of those 5.0 over 2.4 models were digital spread spectrum or digiten spread spectrum. And so while there was interference, it was quite limited because of the spread spectrum. These being single channel analog, if this happened to be on the same channel as the network, would cause probably substantially more interference. So I suspect that is why they designed it that way, was to avoid the interference. These utilized the old style batteries, or the old shape, the stubby AA size cells. They were 3.6 volts, and this is a higher capacity replacement but the original ones would have been somewhere around 270 milliamps, which is a very, very low capacity battery. And so I don't quite understand why they didn't just use a higher capacity battery, like 650 milliamps, for example, and transmit 5.8 gigahertz on both sides. And one could argue, well, this was an economy model, and that's true, it was an economy model. But what I think they should have done is they should have designed it to be 5.8 gigahertz on both sides, put a better battery in it, up the price $10, and took a hit at Uniden and said, Uniden's model is 100-something beans, and ours is 25 beans, and they do the same thing. And I suspect that it would have sold. But I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm not a marketing person. And they didn't do it, and they never will. So that's that. Now into the Deck 6 era, we have no more analog or antitan. Now the 5.8 gigahertz era is very interesting because we saw it produced in so many different technologies. We saw it uh, in, in antitan, we saw it in digitan, in digitan spread spectrum. You know, Deck 6 is nothing but whatever it is, Digitan, there's no Anatan or anything. And the 5.8 gigahertz era was also interesting because it popularized certain features like caller ID. I can't think of any phones, any 5.8 models that didn't have caller ID. And other than the economy models like this, most of them had handset speakerphone. Even some of Uniden's economy models that were analog had, albeit not very good ones, but they had speaker phones. Some 2.4s did, but 2.4... I never took a lot of interest in the 2.4 era. It seemed like it was more of a flop than anything else. Uniden made a couple of good models. A lot of really crummy models, as far as performance goes. A 900 megahertz. I guess it had a pretty good range, too, because we started to see a lot of phones with caller ID. And, of course, you had, like, 5.8 gigahertz. You had Anatan, Digitan, Digitan, Spread Spectrum. And in a lot of ways, I would say 5.8 gigahertz was kind of like the peak era for the landline phone. Because it combined... It was still heavy usage. The cell phones didn't really take over until the Dex 6 era. It was still very high usage of landline phones during the 5.8 gigahertz era. And this is kind of when the, the technology curve w was intersecting nicely with quality and features. You could find a lot of very fully featured 5.8 gigahertz phones, but they were still expensive and good quality. Once you got into the Deck 6 era, it seemed like you would trade features for quality because we were post the the prime intersection of quality and technological uh, advancement. Anyways, 
Um, I guess this is going to be more of a rambly video, but that's okay because the phone is pretty basic. There's not a whole lot to show here. It is pretty the dirty, and inherently somebody wrote the price on it. I believe that's what the thrift store that the letter goes to tends to do, which is kind of obnoxious. They even wrote it onto the screen. The phone itself is is pretty dirty. I always kind of like the ergonomics of these. It's very comfortable in the hand. And the back of it just has like that iconic 5.8 gigahertz appearance to it. I remember seeing these phones around. Not as much as I saw other models like the Uden 1580 at, at the time, but I did see these around sometimes. I see these in businesses and stuff. There's supposed to be a bracket on the back here, and it's it's supposed to be used for either table or desk mount. Uh. It does sit, well, I mean, not with the phone cord plugged in. Without the cords plugged in, it kind of sat okay on the table. You know, and you could use it like this and it would work, but it's not really correct. So I just took a hard drive and propped it up for the video. I don't know if the bracket was sent over with the unit or not. It probably was, and I just can't find it because I didn't look very hard and everything is scattered around here. I have a ton of these in the black finish. I could always grab a mounting bracket from one of those to use because you wouldn't really see that it's the wrong color anyways. So, these did have uh, backlit keyboards. And in fact, it, it's a pretty rare occurrence, but the backlighting is is correct on this. The talk and off buttons, they're not very well illuminated, but they are illuminated enough that you'd be able to see them in the dark. And that is a feature that so many phones have gotten wrong over the years. And I find it comically ironic because... The, the numerics are always backlit, yet the numerics are the only thing that's in the same position on every telephone that you'll pick up in this country. You have all these other buttons, the volume buttons, the talk and off buttons, you know, buttons that you need to be able to see to use the phone in the dark. They're, ne they're really non-standard, and they're never backlit. And yet this cheap economy phone got it right, and they're backlit. So that's good. The screen, I think, is is uh, underutilized because there is a battery icon logo on the screen all the way on the left, and it never illuminates, I think, until it goes dead. Even as it's charging, it doesn't illuminate. Why they couldn't display that, you know, for the active current charge is beyond me. This display panel they used for years. In fact, I'm pretty certain they still use it to this day. It has the dot matrix, if you will. It's not It's not really a dot matrix. It's, it's an alphanumeric line of characters at the top. The second line is a numerics only. And the third line has a couple of um, different icons on there. It's got the... The new, the mute, the two numerics, the voicemail indicator, the ring off indicator, the phone company voicemail indicator. It looks like a speaker phone icon and then the battery. And on the bottom row, which is the fourth row, it's got the date and time, which of course is, is numerics plus a couple of special characters, the colon, the slash, and PM. And when you turn the phone on, the time disappears date and time disappears which I think is very annoying on a lot of the models the date and time stayed and of course this is an economy phone so they're not going to program all of the features into it but some things like a battery icon seems very basic the, the unit certainly is capable of detecting the charge so why couldn't it just display it I think there may be something ever so slightly wrong with the screen on this phone I don't know if the camera is focusing close enough to tell, but on the right side of the screen, it kind of looks like it's a bit faded. 
None of the pixels are dead. This display panel seemed to be pretty reliable over the years. Um, maybe it's just dirty, I don't know. Looks to me like the top right is a little bit faded. Alright, so let's go ahead and switch this uh, testing equipment on. Go over to the simulator here. And let's ring this up. Pretty basic ringer that's been used for a long time. In fact, I believe the Deck 6 variant of this still has the same ring. It's okay, it's a little bit shrill, but it's, you know, it's acceptable. It does have the caller ID, which is the working. It does not have auto talk. It'll hang up when you put it back into the base, but it won't answer. I can't think of very many VTech phones that had auto talk. Uniden almost always did. I kind of liked that feature. Okay, let's take a look at the menu here. We got a program. We have a directory. I don't know if there's anything in here. Oh yeah, it does have entries. It's only got one. Let's cancel it out. That's got a bunch of, oh, it's only got a few uh, caller IDs. I'll just delete these out of here. Okay. Now the caller ID is empty and the uh, directory is empty. I believe it stored only 20 directory entries, which isn't a whole lot, but... I mean, I can't think of 20 numbers I even put in there because I know all the numbers that I call regularly and I just type them in. The button layout's kind of weird. It's got this giant select thing, but yet it doesn't open the menu. You have to go down here to the program and then scroll with these small little buttons. It's trilingual. Got to a tone and pulse on here. It's got a decent range to the volume. It's not very loud. You're not going to hear this over, over too much noise. I think it's got four different rings to it. And it just play infinitely. Huh, that's not the ringer selection I was expecting. That almost sounded like a unit in a ringer. Sounds like fl uh, clatter. Interesting. I don't know if speed dial is different than the directory I... It may be. I don't know. Oops, we're typing in here now. If our speed dial is different, then I guess maybe it can hold... Hold 30 entries? I don't know how you access the speed dial. Oh, you can choose distinctive rings. That's kind of cool. How do you access it, though? You, know, you press and hold it. Uh, how do you delete it? I don't know, whatever, it's just a bogus number anyways. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's make an outside call and see how good the uh, audio quality is. I suspect the audio quality is probably okay on this.
just thought that was the talk button. Sounds okay to me. Hello, Farmer Jones here with the update for Wednesday, November 24th, when we're open 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. The crop is simply splendid, and we are open every day except Thanksgiving right through Christmas. Okay, that was uh, volume on low. I kind of like the way the volume indicator is on here with the pippers. And this is high. To the fields to harvest your own. And the tree triumph will be available along the candy cane trail to help bring your tree back to the baler. Also, you can help yourself by bringing along a tarp so you can slide your tree easily along the grass. Now, today is special for two reasons. First, if you've made a reservation... It's, it gets pretty loud. And it stays clear. It's not distorting at all. Not bad. Alright, now uh, let's do a fine handset so we can hear what that sounds like. Alright, now I'll record a testing message so we can hear what the transmit sounds like. I'm having a lot of revelations today. I remember last time when I had, I don't know, some sometime recently I had thought about this. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense with a cordless phone to record the message because it's a waste of my time because I talk into the message then I gotta record the message. It takes twice as long. I might as well just call another phone. I could either call, um, I could just call the testing answering machine and I could just talk into it live. This way, uh, you know, we're not wasting the time playing back and recording the messages. So I'm just going to move you over here. And let's see, there's not really anything I can clip this to over here. So let me call the testing phone. I will just do it live. This this will save me some time. This time is valuable. It should never be wasted. Okay, I'm outside the studio now. And the volume level is up all the way on this phone, and it has quite a bit of side tone to it. I'm gonna lower it down to the lowest volume setting, which is most likely where I would use it at. Okay, and there is in fact still a pleasant amount of side tone. It's very minimal, but it is still there. I am almost all the way across the room now. I am near the water equipment, which is as far as I can go. And I'm hearing a little bit of static here and there, which I'm pretty sure is the 900 megahertz side losing some of the reception. Okay, now I'm going back to the studio and I'm going to hang up the phone now. never doing it that way again because the reason why that stunk is because now I can't review the uh, I can't review the message and provide any commentary on what the pickup sounded like so I'm gonna record a message as I normally would and I'm gonna just record the message back into the camera and, and it's gonna take twice as long but it's going to serve the purpose that it's supposed to serve.
Okay, we have a low battery now after recording those messages. And you can see on the third row of the screen, the battery indicator light is now the flashing. And it's empty. So I guess those pippers never get used in any circumstance on this phone. Even as it's plugged in and charging, and you can see the charging indicator is on. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's on. And it's charging, and it's still not indicating anything other than empty. Okay, let's come over here to our testing answering machine. And let's take a listen to these testing messages. There's something on the screen of this camera. It's like a little, a little box or something. Uh, what is that? I think it's the exposure. But it's in the wrong spot. It's at the corner of the... It's at the bottom corner of the screen and it should be like in the center. Whatever. I'll fix that afterwards. Two new messages. Message one. It's always good to try new things because sometimes you can find something you like better or sometimes you can find a better way of doing something that works better. But sometimes things are best left alone. And this is one of those cases where the process is best left alone. Okay, I'm over at the uh, uh, water equipment and I'm hearing a little bit of static. Okay, I'm going to traverse back to the um, to the studio now. I'm going to change the channel a couple of times. I don't think it's going to really make a difference as far as the pickup is concerned, but we'll be able to hear what it sounds like to change the channel. Okay, the channel was changed. I just changed it again. And now it's saying that the battery is the low. Not good. Okay, I'm going to hang up with the buttons this time, then I'll call back one more time, and I'll hang up into the cradle. Message two. I'm going to hang up real quick before the battery runs out. End of messages. That has quite an interesting hang up squelch sound. I was expecting it to be more like the old unit and the analog phones were, but it's not really at all. Okay, I think that's going to wrap up this video. I have to take a look at the camera and see what's going on. I, I, yeah, that needs to get moved back into the center. It's, it's focusing, it's not focusing, but the exposure is changing based off of the bottom left corner, and that's not really useful. So I'll get that fixed. Um, and that's going to be it. Well, that's irrelevant. I'm just, I got to close the video. I'm falling apart over and out.